yes, it's a beautiful day. A beautiful day to be talking about nephritis. <laughs> a very good morning and I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus is Ryan again. And this time we're talking about our 47th mnemonic in internal medicine and we're approaching the topic of nephritic syndrome. All right, but first a little joke. So, you know, one day there were different parts of the body who were rating each other. So the brain told the liver, mm, you're a six. The spleen told the, co the colon, uh, you're a seven. The urethra told the bladder, you're an eight. <laughs> okay, guys, and also this scripture today. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Then verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God is love, and he loves us so much that he wants us to have eternal life, which we can only have through his son, Jesus Christ. All right, so let's talk about nephritic syndrome. Um, so today we're talking about secondary causes for nephritic syndrome and the mnemonic is P4S4. All right, so we know that nephritic syndrome is an example of a glomerulopathy. All right, and the pathophysiology behind glomerulopathy is, is largely uh, autoimmune phenomenology in that antibodies bind to structural components of the glomeruli, more glomerular basement membrane and porocytes uh, uh, are involved in nephrotic syndrome, but more mesangium and endothelium involved in nephritic syndrome, right? And we have these circulating antigen antibody complexes and or cell mediated immunity with further immune activation and damage to the glomeruli. So we divide this in terms of whether it's focal, diffuse, segmental or global. So focal means that less than 50% of the glomeruli are involved. Diffuse means that more than 50% of the glomeruli are involved. Segmental means it's just a segment of the glomerulus and global means the entire glomerulus. And clinical manifestations Manifestations of glomerular diseases range from asymptomatic proteinuria through to nephrotic syndrome, asymptomatic hematuria to recurrent gross hematuria, acute nephritis, rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, pulmonary renal syndromes, and chronic renal failure. All right. So we know that ne nephritic syndrome essentially will manifest with hematuria, proteinuria, but not nephrotic range proteinuria. So we're saying the proteinuria that you have is going to be less than 3 grams per 24 hours, all right? You can end up with hypertension and azotemia as a result as well. Uh, of course, we have the primary flavors and we have the secondary flavors. So the primary flavors examples are memonoproliferative glomerular nephritis, type 2 especially, then rapidly progressive or crescentic glomerular nephritis, which includes anti-glomerular basement membrane, uh, disease, immune, post-immune, as well as IgA. Okay, so secondary causes of nephritic syndrome, let's talk about it, guys. Four P's and four S's. So think about post, post, pre, and past. So post trip glomerular nephritis, very common, especially in uh, third world countries. Preeclampsia is something that also happens commonly uh, after the 20th week of gestation in pregnant uh, women. Good pasture syndrome, which is otherwise affectionately, affectionately termed anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, where you get hematuria with hemoptysis, and then of course post renal transplant as well. Then your four S's, which cause secondary nephritic syndrome, include um, the systemic lupus erythematosus, and within the ambit of that, within the autoimmune spectrum, we can also think of polytrius nodosa, which is a vasculitic syndrome, which also gives you nephritic syndrome. Henoch Schoenlein purpura we spoke about, which also gives you nephritic syndrome as well. And the giveaway we said was palpable purpura, especially in younger folks in the lower limbs. Systemic bacterial endocarditis, right? Remember the modified Duke criteria and of course, serum sickness. All right, all right, all right, okay. Um, so essentially, how do you differentiate nephritic from nephrotic syndrome? Well, nephritic syndrome, the onset is faster. Edema is more a feature of nephrotic than nephritic syndrome. Blood pressure tends to be higher and the intervascular volume also higher in nephritic versus nephrotic. Uh, of course, proteinuria, we said, was the way to differentiate them. So in nephrotic syndrome, we typically have proteinuria in excess of 3 grams per 24 hours, but in nephritic, less than 3 grams per 24 hours. In hematuria as well as more of a feature of nephritic syndrome. And on urine sediment, in nephritic syndrome, what you're going to see is high line casts with lipid droplets, so-called oval fat bodies. But in nephritic syndrome, the situation is that uh, on the urine sediment of dysmorphic red cells, white cells, red cells, cast granular casts. Uh, uh, and of course, the albumin is markedly reduced in nephritic versus nephritic. Creatinine is usually increased in nephritic, but may be so or may not be so in nephritic. Serum sodium is 
diminished in both these uh, 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 pathologies. Okay, how do we investigate nephritic syndrome? It's good to do a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, anti-nuclear factor, anti double standard DNA, looking for SLE, right, excitable nuclear antigens, P anchor, C anchor, looking for your vasculitic syndromes, anti glomerular base membrane antibodies for good pastures syndrome. All right, all right, C3, C4, right, complements are low. Uh, in most of the etiologies, except for Ig nephropathy, creatinine kinase, uric acid, antiseptilizing O titer, which speaks to post fatus, hip B serology, hip C serology, cryoglobulinemia, which keeps company with hip C, as we know, uh, quantitative immunoglobulin, serum protein exophoresis, hunting for myeloma, and renal biopsy ultimately, right? Treatment modalities, depending on the primary pathology we're dealing with, are steroids with a view to cyclophosphamide or microfin lipomorphotol for steroid spinning effect and for induction and remission. Uh, Rituximab is refractory. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful day.